Hey, welcome back to Historic Investments and the Ohio Gun Collectors Association. We're at the May 2022 display co um, competition. Gary here has been uh, kind enough to uh, bring a, just a slew of Lugers. And if you're interested in early automatic pistols or just Lugers in general, Gary's the guy to see at this show. But anyway, um, without further ado, let me just uh, turn over the discussion to Gary and he can talk about the Lugers and, and bring a couple of special ones to, to your attention. I have... Uh pretty interesting over here the uh, from 1909 to 1942 uh, a pretty good selection there uh, with the exception of a couple of Kriegoffs that I'm looking for well anybody who collects Lugers are always a few things that they're looking for right but I think you had mentioned isn't there a 1900 here but you're just saying in that area it's 1909 to 1942. Yeah, those are mostly the military. Okay. and But you've also got some conversion kits, and then you've got some very, you know, got right. some accessories yeah. here, and then some very, very special prototype Lugers. Yes. Yes. The, uh, this here is a uh, 19, they call it a 1902, but it's actually 1903 uh, prototype. Let's take a, maybe, uh, let's show the viewers here a little bit more about this particular gun. All right. The, the big thing is the, uh, the, you know it's a prototype by the B below the serial right. number. All right. And this, according to Walters in his book, this is the third 9 millimeter made. Well, that's fantastic. And, uh, but in terms of manner of finish, it's finished as per the other contemporary Lugers. In other words, it's got a rust blue finish, small parts are strawed. Um, does it know. have any uh, Cal 9mm on the bottom of the magazine? No, or, it does no, not. It's, got, it's still, at that time, they probably hadn't introduced the Cal 9mm. Right. Okay. Um, chamber marking is blank, as you might expect from a, a prototype at that time, you right? Know. And some of the prototypes um, might have a GL on the rear toggle. Yeah, this, this does this, not. This one does not have a GL. Right. Okay, so you're basing the, uh, you know, the status largely on the serial number and the B suffix. Yes. So it's in the ten thousand range. Yes. Like almost all of the uh, Lugers that are prototypes of that era are in that serial right. range. Right. And, and it has the old model frame. Okay, that, that's just great. And really, that the condition is spectacular. It really looks super. And of course, it's got some handling, as you might expect, from any kind of a test gun. And you guys out there who want brand new, untouched Lugers, you're never going to get one if it's a prototype gun because these were tested and sometimes tested pretty hard. Yeah. Yep. So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it back to you before I drop it, and then you'll get very angry at me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, but that's... that's so that's that one is. of them, and, and you've got another favorite Luger here too, don't you? Yes, I do. Here's all, something you were, you were, well, it's like children, right? It's yes. just, you can't have enough or you, they can't leave home soon enough at some point. But right now you're still in the, you're still, after having done this for what, 40 or 50 years, you're still interested in getting more oh, children. Yeah. yeah. We were talking earlier and he said, this is uh, this is considered a lunchbox special. If you kind of look at other lunchbox specials from other manufacturers, sometimes they're mismatched parts guns, sometimes they're not finished. In this particular case, this is a wonderfully original finished Luger. So why did you think this is a lunchbox special? All righty. Uh, most of your lunchbox specials were liberated from the factory by the employees that were doing the test firing. Basically, they stole the guns or stole the parts. Sneak it out of there in a lunchbox in my hand. Now getting caught meant getting fired, but I figured I'd have it all by the time I retired. It's harder right. to steal the guns. They stole parts and then assembled them at home. That could be. I, you know, where they were assembled, I have no idea. Uh, this particular gun has no proof marks whatsoever. And you'd be looking at uh, the uh, right side of the barrel <laughs> extension. So if it's a, uh, 
If it's a military gun, certainly, and this would be, well, well we don't really know. It's a Mauser banner, so it's probably a commercial, but there, there are actually no marks whatsoever except the serial number on this particular gun, right? Yeah. Right. But it is marked in a, in a military fashion, at least in terms of the side plate placement. And, um, you know, I don't see any numbers at all on the takedown lever. No. So there are going to be some differences because it's a, it's a, a they call it a lunchbox gun, because you'd put the parts in or maybe you'd put the, the gun in your lunchbox. I don't think they had any fast food places at the time or no. cafeterias. You could still bring a lunch box. Very convenient to take out pistol parts. I suppose. It's kind of so. harder to take out a lunch box rifle. Yeah. But but anyway, I'm, I'm interrupting you. So what no, else would you like to right, say huh? about this lunch box gun? Okay, so we've kind of covered it. It's basically it's a lunch box gun because of the lack of proofs. Right. And no idea of what the production would be. <laughs> Certainly there's one more. Maybe there's an accessory that you would like to discuss. Well, I'll tell you, there, here's one here that's interesting. This is a 1903 commercial. A 1903 commercial, okay. Right. That's, a, that's a pretty scarce gun. Yes, but what's interesting is that the 03 commercials had a fat barrel. This does not. I don't know why. Well, you know, if you collect Lugers, there's always an, another one around the corner with an... I'd like to say it's an interesting history, but sometimes we'll just never know the details yeah. about the history. You know, there's some excellent reference books out there, but they can't cover every single Luger. And we as collectors, we like to know everything about every single item in our collection. And, and sometimes that's just not possible. No. It, so, but anyway, on that note, Thank you very much. We oh, really ready? appreciate being able to review this, literally this 40 year assortment of Lugers. I mean, we, obviously there's no time to discuss everyone in detail, but I, you know, congratulations for your finds. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all the fun is in the finding. So, hey, Gary, listen, it's just really been great having you at this OGCA display show. I, and I have to ask you, what made you decide to display this year? Uh, most of these guns have been acquired here at the OGCA. Really? Okay. I've been 50 years doing this. So would you say OGCA is a magnet for Lugers? It's a magnet, yes, it's hard to find Lugers. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so that's probably been of greatest benefit to you, correct? Oh, yeah. In yeah. terms of being able to find and add to your collection and maybe network um, to the other members. Yes. Yes, yes, that's uh, that's a big part of it too. And your comment would be, if you're not a member, you should join OGCA. Oh yeah, certainly. You need to tell the viewers that. Yep. If you're not a member, join OGCA. This is this is where you're going to find the the little treasures you're looking for. Okay. Well, with that, guys, say hey, thank you very much for joining us, and um, remember remember what Gary said: join OGCA.